In this section, we will cover reassembly for two types of serviceable hub assemblies, preset or LMS, and manual adjusted. Preset hub assemblies include a precision machined hub, specially toleranced bearings, a spacer, and a premium seal. This type of hub requires a special bearing adjustment procedure. Manual adjusted hub assemblies, sometimes referred to as conventional hub assemblies, include standard bearings and a seal, but do not include a spacer. SKF recommends following the TMC RP618 procedure for manual bearing adjustment. When reassembling a hub assembly, the first step is to install new bearing races into the bore. This procedure differs for aluminum and iron hubs. We'll cover both. It's important to note that preset hub assemblies require specially toleranced half-stand bearings. Also, the SKF rebuild kit for preset includes all of the components required to rebuild a preset hub assembly. To facilitate installation in an aluminum hub, most often steer or drive, the hub must be heated evenly. It is recommended to place the hub in an oven or submerge it in boiling water. Do not exceed 300 degrees Fahrenheit and do not use anything that produces localized heat that can damage the hub. Also, cool the race in a freezer set at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below for at least one hour. The hub will expand with heat and the race will contract with cold. After carefully removing the hub from the heat source, carefully drop in the cold bearing race. The race should now slide easily into the hub. Make sure it is fully seated. If the race is loose, allow a few seconds for it to heat up and secure itself. Use a 1,000th to 2,000th of an inch feeler gauge to ensure the race is fully seated against the shoulder of the bearing bore. If you are installing a new race in an iron hub, there is no need for heat. Using an SKF HD1 tool, press the bearing race into the hub and make sure it is fully seated. Use a 1,000th to 2,000th of an inch feeler gauge to ensure the race is fully seated against the shoulder of the bearing bore. Then, position the hub so the seal is facing upward. For some preset steer hubs, the spacer will need to be inserted now if it is too wide to fit past the inner bearing race. If this is the case, insert the tubular spacer, tapered and down, into the hub. Then, lube and install the inner bearing cone. Be sure to use gloves or hand protection when handling lubricant to minimize contact with skin. For trailer semi-fluid and hard grease applications, pack the inner and outer wheel bearing cones with grease. Work the grease into the bearing by machine or by hand so that the grease goes under the bearing cage and toward the cone rib and roller ends. Conmet does not approve of hard grease in preset applications. Now that the inner bearing is in place, it's time to install the seal. Never reuse a seal that has been installed on a spindle or removed from the hub. The sealing surfaces have been compromised. Preset hub assemblies require the Scott Seal Plus XL, the OEM seal in preset hubs. However, the Scott Seal Classic or Scott Seal Plus XL may be used in manual adjusted hub assemblies based on your preference. The Scott Seal Plus XL is designed to handle aggressive synthetic lubricants, harsh environments, and high heat applications. No special installation tools are required. Just lightly lubricate the outside and inside diameter of the seal with a wheel end lubricant. A thin layer of oil may be applied to the hub bore. Never install dry and do not over lubricate the seal. Press the seal evenly into the bore with both palms. A rubber mallet or soft face tool may be used to gently tap the seal into place. Be sure the seal is evenly seated and bottomed in the bore. As in any seal installation, apply an even driving force to avoid cocking the seal or damaging the flange surface. Note, there are two drive axle Scott Seal Plus XL seals, 47691 and 47692. The 47691 is the OE seal and has a lower profile for greater tone ring clearance. Check to be certain the seal is not cocked and also check that the seal's inner diameter and bearing turn smoothly. There may be some drag due to the seal resistance and this is normal. Allow 5 minutes for the rubber to settle in the hub before installing the hub assembly onto the spindle. When installing the Scott Seal Classic, you will notice that the box includes the proper seal drive plate part number required for installation. 
The centering plug is sized to the inner bearing cone's internal diameter and accurately centers the Scott seal in the bore to prevent cocking during installation. A cross-reference for the bearing to centering plug may be found in the TFO wheel end guide 457975 or by referencing the Scott seal tool chart 457373. Tools are designed specifically for each manufacturer's seals. Therefore, it is important to use SKF tools with SKF seals. Using another brand can cause damage to the seal, requiring the seal to be removed and replaced. Use the universal tool handle, part number 450237, and assemble the tool. Slide the plate with the seal nest outward onto the installation tool flange. Next, slide on the standard plug bushing, which is included with the tool handle. Always remember metal to metal, green to green. Next, install the centering plug over the bushing with the tapered end facing outward. Install the washer and nut. Tighten the nut. To install the Scott Seal Classic, hold the tool handle firmly and straight and drive the seal with firm hammer strokes until the seal is squarely seated. Continue driving the seal into the hub until the sound of impact changes. Do not strike again. The change of tone indicates the metal-to-metal -metal contact of the seal bottoming in the bore. Now check for freedom of movement by manually moving the sealing element up and down. Ensure the inner bearing rotates freely. For trailer hard grease hub fills, pack the hub cavity with grease. Fill the cavity up to the bearing races. Remember, hard grease is not approved by CONMET for preset hub assemblies. For drive and trailer preset hub assemblies, turn the hub over and place it carefully seal side down. Take care not to damage the ABS tone ring. Install the spacer. If the spacer has a tapered end, install toward the outboard side. Next, we will cover reinstalling the hub assembly back onto the vehicle. But first, test your knowledge on this section by taking this short quiz.